aggregation of structured and unstructured data. And when we talk about unstructured data, we're talking in the context of PDFs, we're talking in the context of Excel, we're talking in the context of Word and PowerPoint. And, and let me give you an example to that because it's very important. Um, you know, no secret, you know, 80% of the banking institutions today run on Excel for a greater portion of what they do. Um, you know, we have, for instance, an Excel parser, so we can go in and we can aggregate information, whether that's the formulas or whether that's the data in the cells against multiple spreadsheets, right? Um, we can open up PDFs. We have a project going on right now um, with client statements, opening up client statements, and we are opening up over 900,000 900, client statements a day and only extracting out of those three pieces of data. Mm -hmm. Positions, transactions, and summary information. So, um, you know, the development that we've been able to do in the last 12 months has just, you know, accelerated immensely. Um, as we look forward into 2017, um, the, the major enhancements that we're making is we have a, a concept called plugins, and plugins are, you know, essentially algorithms. So, our, that Excel capability I just mentioned, that's a plugin. Um, and we have various plugins that create different algorithms for matching and classification and aggregation of that information, right? So the expansion is going to come into our self-serve mode and making those plugins, for instance, um, regulatory compatible, right? So, you know, more finite, so we'll, you know, you can target it, you can teach it, right? So we've added machine learning. And we've added artificial intelligence in those early stages. You'll see much more advancement in both of those categories. And in mid-17, um, as we look at our marketing you know, efforts, we're going to look in mid-17 to how we're promoting this out as that self-serve capability for any size of an institution that wants to be able to get insight very quickly with a lot of agility into disparate pieces of information. So we pay a lot of attention to that and because in financial, the in financial industry they want to make sure that they have, um, you know, things can't be proprietary anymore, right? It's very important even from a, you know, from a vendor perspective. And so, you know, we work very hard on our algorithms, but where there's proven capabilities of technology, so for instance, we use Elasticsearch, right? Um, we use Python. Okay, we're using certain capabilities where people have spent a lot of money, you know, building the technical aspects of search, for example, right? So those are the types of products that we have embedded. And they're the newer products. We're not going out and doing anything um, from a legacy perspective. The, the environments are all Linux um, in terms of from an install perspective, but we leverage a, a number of different tools. Our most successful year will actually be this year. Mm -hmm. um, we had double digit growth last year, um, but 2016 will be you know, the best year that we've, we've ever had. Um, the company, we have um, 12 people at the moment. Mm -hmm. We have two locations. We have an office in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we have an office in New Jersey, um, Montclair, New Jersey. Um, and we are hiring um, you know, we, you know, less is more. It doesn't take, you know, armies of people to deliver. Um, but where we're expanding our staff now is in sales and marketing, um, products, um, and product support. Mm -hmm. um, as we are onboarding more customers, um, our support capabilities are also incrementally increasing there. Certainly, the number one goal for us is is to expand our client base. Mm -hmm. Okay, and because we cross capital markets, right? Um, you know, one of my goals is to make sure that we have those those various blocks within the in the chain, if you will. Um, so we have a large global banks. Um, we'd like to work within the regulators and the utilities. So we're working. We have you know, prospects in that area. So be able to sell to all the partners in the ecosystem, from the banks to the custodians to the brokers to service providers mm -hmm. and, and regula regulators. Um, you know, our first major customer is a global bank. 
uh, our reach is coming from as far as Australia, where we're getting calls. So I think because of the nature of our clientele, we're global by nature. Um, but we, and so geographically, we'll likely, ex you know, we'll expand to Europe first, is likely, just based on where our pipeline is today. Um, but I'm also very focused on making sure that we get a footprint within, you know, the various players within the ecosystem mm -hmm. of financial services. Mm -hmm. The world in which we're in, you know, there's very few financial technology companies or technology companies in general, financial technology or people in our industry that talk about the social impact that we're making, mm -hmm. right? And I believe that part of what our tool can do, because it is providing clarity not only to the business owners within the banking institution, but by giving that clarity, that clarity is passed on to their customers, mm -hmm. right? And so by looking at the incremental value and how we can start releasing this data from being hostage and getting answers more quickly, right? Not within days and weeks, you know, but in hours, in days, and giving information back to customers, whether those are retail customers, whether those are institutional customers, mm -hmm. that's gonna give people safety. It's going to make them feel safer. It's not going to make them question, why can't I get the answers that I'm looking for, right? And in a sense, I think there's a social impact to that, that will restore trust in the banking industry, in the financial services industry globally. Mm -hmm.